It's all or nothing. We are live. I wanna fall in the Russian. It all is all or nothing. I wanna fall in it all. Unchurched. Glory to God. I hope you're doing well. You know, that song Waterfall just comes, um, has just been ringing in my spirit the last couple of days, and it's just, I just can't get enough of it. But in God's word, it says that the waterfall, his waterfall overcomes us and it um, cleanses and washes us. So today we just, I just welcome in the Holy Spirit to take over. We're starting right away. Father God, I decree and declare that you, Father God, are in control of all things. That, Father God, you have ordained this time, Father God, to teach your people what you would have them to hear. Let the Spirit speak to the church and let the church's ears be attentive to what the thus saith the Lord God. I thank you, Father God, that you have ordained, Father God, God, the season and times and the people that you have placed in this in this earth. And I thank you, Father God, right now there is nothing and no one, no principality, no high places, Father God, that can, Father God, tear down what you have begun to do in your children. I thank you, Father God, that there's a spiritual cleansing going across this world, Lord, and a spiritual awakening, Lord, and that people are laying down religion, people are laying down by their biases, Father God, and they're picking up the Lord Jesus Christ. Father God, they are no longer, Father God, clothed in their own righteousness and their self-righteousness, Father God, and the things that they have, they're no longer holding onto those idols, but they have returned unto you. I thank you, Lord, that you, Father God, are hearing the cries of your people and those yet to be your people. I speak, Father God, a spirit of grace, a spirit of salvation, Father God, across this world, Father God, that you, Father God, manifest your glory. And as you are piercing the darkness, Father God, let your vessels, Father God, be vessels of love and light that we receive them in, Father God, with all that you have received us in. Let us, Father God, not withhold any good thing to those that need it, Father God, as it is in our capability to give it. Let us, Father God, be our your hands and feet in this, situ in, in this season, Father God. Let us, Father God, go beyond what is the norm and show forth your love, your glory to this world. I thank you, Father God, that you, Lord, are a master and controller of all. And no matter, Father God, who's tried to speak fear, doubt, and disbelief, Father God, that, Father God, you are the one and true living God. There's none beside you, Lord. And I give you glory and honor and praise. I thank you, Father God, for all that you have done and all that you are doing. I thank you, Father God, for your hedge of protection around your I thank you, Father God, for your mercy, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that when when times, Father God, when we don't even know who we are, Father God, that you bring a mirror and say, look, you are my child. So, Father God, remind each and every one of your people that what, what their heritage is in you and teach them how to war, Father God, like never before. And I thank you, Lord, for the message today, Father God, is about war for, for Father God. And I thank you, Lord, that we just started out in prayer. And you, were, you want to talk about weapons of warfare. So, Father God, I ask that each person that does not understand what you have given them to fight the battles that are here now, Father God, and those to come, that is all for word, Lord, that you have given us all the instructions that we need, Lord. And I ask, Father God, that you, Father God, have mercy on those that have not been reading their word, but give them an unction. Draw them, Holy Spirit, unto the Father's word. For you are the spirit of truth. Guide them to all truth. 
they may know that they are not um, weak and left behind, and that they are not help that they are, they are not helpless. That they are fully equipped with, the, with everything they need to fight this battle. I thank you, Lord, right now for all those that are yielding your word, Father God. Even the novices that are trying to, Father God, show forth their testimony. Give them the right words to say in the right time to the right person, Father God. Father God, uh, one will water and one will um one will um, water, one will plant, Father God, one will plant, one will water, but you are the one that's giving the increase. So, Father God, we humbly submit to what you would have us do in this time. And right now, Lord, I yield to the Holy Spirit. Teach what the Father would have taught today in Jesus name amen amen last week we were talking about maturity and growing away from childish ways and we began the um, study on um, the naked soldier i'm not going to go over those things uh, except for one little thing wrong words for right action i want to make sure that um i know i gave homework assignment on that want to make sure that you're really taking that to heart and just and don't be in condemnation when you find yourself doing it. Just remind yourself, and then you you'll retrain your brain. A lot of times we think we get a lesson and we um, get it, and then we falter or we fall or we go back to an old old habit or old saying, and we start condemning ourselves. There's no reason to be in condemnation. You're learning to retrain your mind because God says by the renewing of your mind. So we have to renew our mind and and things that's been in our mindsets, in our vocabulary, in in our um, in our um, I guess thought bank has to be removed. It has to be replaced with other things. So don't be hard on yourself. But just continue when you find catching yourself saying those negative things and those negative words that you repent and go on. Even if they're coming in your head, go ahead and repent and come on and then give God the praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are reminding me who I am in Christ Jesus, that I'm the head and not the tail. I'm a leader and not a follower. I'm a light in the midst of darkness that will pierce the darkness and no, no weapon formed against me can prosper. So when you get ready to say, oh, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm defeated or that person get on my nerves or that person always acts that way. No, say, God, regardless of what that person is acting like, I am yours and I will act accordingly. Bless them, Father God. I will bless those that, um, that the fight them you. I will bless and not curse those. We, when people are coming at us, um, we need to be able to bless them. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. So these are, you just start taking those words out and, and replace them with others. But do not be disheartened if you falter and put fail while you're learning this new tool and, and, and learning that new mindset. I'm going to give you homework because I have, I feel this pushing to intercede and pray. So I'm going to give you all homework right quick. So just in case we don't get to everything in the lesson that you have homework. I need you to have homework that you can study and eat on all week. It is important that you just don't hear someone preaching and teaching to you or going on an online study, um, online service, but that you get in your word for yourself and take the things that people are teaching you and showing you and rightly divide. Be Bereans. When we started this year, before all this happened, God, God's word was, be, have my people learn to be Bereans. And that means that you study the word for yourself. You study for when someone's giving you notes, when people are telling you things, that um, you go back and make sure that they is lining up with the word of God. No one knows everything. So make sure that when, and then if you have clarity or if there's something that comes out to you, or if you with other people and you guys are discussing this later afterwards, then go and rightly divide the word. Don't go up to what you think it is. Make sure that you line it up with the word of God. Amen. The, the key words for um, today um, will come out of 2 Corinthians 10 verses 1 through 6. The key verses is 3 and 4. And in that, the key two key words is weapon and warfare. So part of your homework this week is learn how to use your weapons and learn how, how properly properly to have warfare. Last this early this morning, got um, added a couple words. So this is pop quiz. This is going to be um, extra credit, I, I would say, but it will it'll benefit you. But um, at the end of the at the end of the message or when I post this on YouTube, I will have the links to all these things. So don't try to. Um, try to take a whole bunch of hurried notes. I want you to listen. So then you can go back and study. Okay. I'm not saying don't take notes, but I'm saying don't try to say, Oh, what did she say? Cause you know, Cynthia talks fast. I'm working on that, but I need to get it all out. So you will have it and you can always go back and rewind, but I'm, I'm going to link notes on there for you. But so I want you to really listen 
And if anything is distracting you right now and anything else is going on around you, anybody or any kids or anyone else, I speak peace be still that you may get what God has for you today. Amen. So again, 2 Corinthians 10, 1 through 6, the key verses is 3 4. Your key words are weapon of warfare. And now I'm going to add pulling down strongholds is what we're going to learn all through this week. And I'm going to be praying for you when, when God starts bringing strongholds to your mind that, that um, when you get them, you um, rightly divide it with the word of God so you can bring down a stronghold. And I will give you an example in a minute. Casting down imaginations is another thing I'm praying over you guys this week. And every high thing, every high thing that exalts itself above the name of God and bringing into captivity every thought and so when I was um, up last night and praying, God's like, I need you to talk about the high places in his life. And so I was up to about 3.30 this morning and just, um, just praying and making sure I go over the word. Because sometimes even when we as ministers or teachers or prophets or whatever, um, five-fold ministry or whatever giftings you go on on, great scholars or PhDs, sometimes we think we know a thing to the point where okay God you want me to talk about this and you don't go back and study I, I, I suggest you you don't get into that that high mindedness or the arrogancy that you think you know the word of God so much and whatever he's trying to tell you go back and study it or go back and ask him what would you have me share with your people it is so so important that we do that we do that so what is the significance of a high place in the Bible High places, very simply, is where places of worship on elevated pieces of ground. High places were originally dedicated to idol worship. You can find this in Numbers 33 and 52 and Leviticus 26 and 30, especially against the Moabites in Isaiah 16, um, 12. These shrines often included an altar and a sacred object such as a stone pillar or a wooden pole in various shapes identified with the object of worship. Maybe it animals, um, constellations, goddess and fertility, deities and stuff like that. So I'm going to stop right there because the stronghold that God showed me um, from a lot of his people, they're like, oh, no, I'm not doing zodiac sign. I'm not doing those, um, what do you call those things, those balls, the crystal balls. I'm not doing those Ouija boys and stuff like that. But you're on Facebook playing OMG and all these other things. So I'm just going to um, let that sit there right there. Go and ask God. You don't have to say, well, Cynthia, you're overly, overly spiritualizing it. No, I'm not. Because you need to go back. Nemesis and all of them. You need to go back and see what the reports of them are. So when we go around playing with idols and we don't know that we're doing it, and we have these um, adverse effects in our lives, then you're like, well, I'm doing everything right. But but no, you're not. You're playing with high things. You're playing with things in, um, in the spiritual realm that you know not. Because it's clothing sometimes to um, give you entertainment. Watch what your entertainment is. Oh, God. Amen. That's just a side note right there. So, okay. It seems that at times high places were set up to, uh, in a spot that had artificially elevated. And 2 Kings 16, 4 seems that um, differentiates the high places from the hills. I want, and while I was reading that, I was thinking about how Gideon, when God said go down and tear down the high places and other, in other places in the Bible, God would tell his people to go tear down the high places because the high places represents those that, things that have been exalted against God and his word, word and his temple. So the enemy is always going to try to bring something above what God has already established. So this is a de I decree and declare that God will reveal to you in your lives every high place, everything that you have placed above him. Being willingly or unknowingly, Father God, right now, I ask that you bring a spirit of revelation that they may be able to see, Father God, that everything that's been hidden, Father God, every blind spot in their lives, Lord, I speak right now that they are delivered from today. That they, Father God, have the opportunity, Father God, to repent and to take those things out of their lives, be what it is, Father God. And we cover them with the blood of Jesus and let it no longer happen have any effect on them. I pray this in the most holy name, Jesus. All throughout this, I don't, I'm going to be decreeing and declaring because this is a serious thing, people of God. You're walking around and you're continuing to play with things that are not yours to play with. You continue to put, bring things with God and you and the world. So you got to say, am I sold out or not? Because when you, when you became a child of God, it was a free, it is a free gift. It is never something that you would ever have to pay for. No works, no, nothing you could ever do could ever take the place of that free salvation gift. But now that we are children of God and we're growing up, and I'm talking to you, 
I'm, I'm talking to grown up um, um, disciples here, but those that are listening to learn that you don't need to be have anything else and God. God is more than enough. So we're, we're going to continue to be praying this week that the high places in your lives are taken down. The strongholds in your mind is taken down. Those imaginations that sometimes even with past relationships or how you felt that your life should have been and you're fantasizing about a life that you cannot have because it's already in the past and it's taking the place of how you can live in the future because your presence is so logged up in what things that could have been, should have been, or would have been that you cannot see clearly what God has set before you. So right now I decree and declare, Father God, that we come against every imagination that, Father God, that takes the place of what you have called us to be. I decree and declare, Father God, that we, Father God, will no longer, Father God, live in a fantasy world or what we could have had or who we could have had, but, Father God, we look unto you, which come of the, uh, work, to the hills of which come with our help, that we look to you, Father God, and say, what would you have? Whom would you have me in my life? Father God. Father God, I thank you right now that we're no longer going to dwell, Father God, on the wrongs and injustice that were done to us because we have washed it under the blood. Because when you, Father God, have adopted us into, into your family, we're no longer under our bloodline, Father God. Our bloodline is royalty, Father God. Our bloodline is sanctified, Father God. Our bloodline gives us all power, Father God. Our bloodline gives us blessings unspeakable, Father God. And I decree and declare, Father God, as your children go forth in this whole this week coming up, Father God, from the Sunday, Father God, to next Saturday, that they will realize the blessings of the Lord upon their lives, and they will be grateful, Father God. They will break out in songs of praise. They will break out, Father God, in songs of thanksgiving. They, Father God, will give out of their abundance, Father God. And Father God, they will remember how good it is to be your child in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I'm still on the high places. The Israelites forever was turning away from God. They practiced Moloch worship. They practiced Baal. They, they were doing it all. Jeremiah 32, 35 is another reference. Although um, Solomon built the temple of God in Jerusalem, he later established idolatrous places for his foreign wives outside of Jerusalem and worshiped with them, causing him to lose the kingdom. First Kings 11, 11. So don't think because you're walking in anointing and gifts and that you still can, you can still walk and prophesy and lay hands and, and um, eloquently give your best, the sermons and people are clapping for you and giving you, giving you tithes and worships and love offerings and stuff like that, that you are right with God. Because if you set up anything else in his place, even though on the outside that we see these things are all looking good for you, God says you have lost kingdom. So now this is a time for you to, um, to repent men and women of God. So if you're being idolatrous and put a high place of adultery above what you have been called to do for the, um, for the Father, this is your time and space and your warning to repent. You cannot waver between two places of worship. I keep hearing guys say that you cannot waver between two places of worship. Hallelujah. Now let's talk a little bit about the high places of Israel for the worship of God, because right now he just made that line, that clear line. So if you were, if you were thinking, okay, I could do a little bit of this and I could do a little bit of that. I can have a little bit of Jesus. And I can have a little bit of whatever other religion there is or whatever things that you want to dip and dab in, or I want to go ahead and, um, keep my crystals and all these other things. There's nothing wrong with them. And maybe I need a backup in something else. God says, no, you don't. It is him or nothing. And that song, and that's what waterfall can, continues. That song keeps coming in my mind. It's all or nothing, people of God. You got to be all the way in. All the way in. Amen? Okay. Hallelujah. I'm getting myself excited here. So let me calm my little self down a little bit so I can go ahead and finish teaching this. I haven't even gotten to the lesson. This is all things God told me uh, after I had studied the lesson. So we're going to keep going. All right. In Israel, um, the played a major role in Israel worship and the earliest biblical mention of a site of worship later called a high place is found in Genesis 12, 6 and 8. You know how I feel about law of first mention. Always go back to the first place that you hear God, um, see God mention something and study it all the way out. Unless the blood of Christ and the new covenant of Christ after he shed his blood and read it, 
rose again, if he does not know and boil it, then you need to still hold on to that law of first mention. Understand? Okay. So in Genesis 12, 6 and 8, uh, where Abram built altars to the Lord at Shaklam and Hebron. Abram built an altar in the region of Morah and was willing to sacrifice his son there. This is Genesis 22, 1 and 2. This, this site is traditionally believed to be the same high place where the Temple of Jerusalem was built. Jacob set up a stone pillar to the Lord at Bethel in Genesis 28 and 18 and 19. And Moses met God on Mount Sinai in Exodus 19, 1 and 3. Joshua set up some stone pillars after crossing the Jordan in Joshua 4 and 20 and considered that a high place of worship because the Israelite came up from Jordan, from the Jordan on higher ground. The high places were visited regularly by the prophet Samuel in 1 Samuel 7, 16. High places at, at sites of Canaanite idol worship, Judges 3 and 19, extended to the period of Elijah, 1 Kings 18, um, 16 and 40. God would name only one high place where sacrifices were authorized, and that was a temple in Jerusalem, 2 Chronicles um, 3 and 1. God commanded that all other high places be destroyed. King Joash destroyed them in 2 Kings 22 um, through um, 23. So therefore, I decree and declare when God reveals to every high place that you will be obedient and to, to take down those high places and that you will no have, no have no backlash from the enemy, that you no longer fear like Gideon would do his in hiding. God, we are no longer hiding. We are the children of the most high God. We, you have given us every right to rule and reign. And so, Father God, I decree and declare, Father God, the spirit of fear to be removed out of your children and that they will have Holy Ghost boldness, that they will have boldness and wisdom, Father God, to tear down every high place and, that, and everything that exalts his name against your name, Father God, that they will stand, Father God, not just only in humility and boldness, but, Father God, in love, that, Father God, many things, Father God, can be cast down in love we can surprise the enemy with love, Father God, because they won't expect that. They will expect us to come back, Father God, with our own harsh words. So, Father God, teach your people how to war this day in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm going to go back to the word that I'm supposed to um, be teaching you today. But that was, that was what the Spirit of the Lord told me to give you. And I only have seven minutes left in my 30 minutes, glory. But that was what God had made me stay up all night to make sure that you understand he is not accepting any high places in our lives. The children of God, this week, you go through every area of your life and you ask God, do I have any high places? Do I have strongholds? Do I have imaginations that I have placed before you, Father God? Do I have any idols, Father God? Have I not brought something in my life into captivity? Have I still held on to rejections or how people have hurt me? And I rehearse that. And so every time I have a conversation, it's all about what somebody's done to me and not giving you glory. Have I mixed the two together? So, Father God, I decree and declare that it's a time of revelation upon your people, that we, Father God, get these out of our lives so that we can war the war for a right. In the book of, um, there's this book that's very famous, The Art of War, and um, there's a quote in there that, um, well, there's many quotes in there, but there was one of them that I found very interesting. Um, it says, if you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not to fear the results of a hundred battles. If you know yourself, but not the enemy, for every victory gained, you will, you, you will suffer a defeat. If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. Now, aren't you tired of losing battles that should be won easily? So today, know who you are, know who you are, and know that we have a real enemy. Know that there are things in us that we have to deal with, and the only way that we're gonna deal with it truthfully and honestly and purely is to go before the Father, lay before him, Take out your word. Let him know. He already knows. Confess your fault. Go to him and be cleansed. It is not a condemnation. It's a conviction time to bring you into a place that you can stand before any enemy because then you know who you are and who, you, who has your back. And then when you know the tactics of the enemy, you will not let conversations, people doing things to you, people looking at you crazy, all those kinds of things won't bother you. I'll give you a slight example. I was in front of um, Costco and on the phone waiting to go in because um, I was waiting for God's perfect time for me to leave to go because he told me to sit in the car. And one lady just comes in front of my car and she just starts glaring at me, takes off her mask and uh, lights a cigarette in front of my car and glaring at me. 
And I was just looking at her and I was like, Lord, I glory, I glory, Father God. I, I call this one in the kingdom of heaven. I call her to the um, marvelous light. She ran away from my car, went a couple cars down and kept staring at me because I'm not going to be like, oh, why is that lady in front of my car doing this, this, this? No, God, you sat her here for a set time. So guess what? Any me might have tried to bring her in here to bring me to go in Christ before I go do God's assignment. But I recognize what the, who the enemy is and one of his tactics. So therefore, I took I took what I have, my tools, my weapons, what God has given me, and 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 used the weapon of love. I used the weapon of love, and I used the weapon of um, um, intercessory prayer to call, pray for her salvation. Because God said I can have anything I want. I want the souls of men for the kingdom of God. So therefore, I use what I knew in my arsenal, and I and declare that woman will be saved and she will be saved soon. And, and I thank you, Lord, for all the other people that come against us right now, have spoken against us or come, Father God, with chatter in our ears, Father God, even in our workplace, Father God, and try to interrupt us, Father God, or try to talk about us, or even try to, Father God, slander our names, Father God, or take things from us. That, Father God, right now, that we will be a bold witness. And because of our witness and our love for you and our standing and our integrity, Father God, that salvation will come. Oh, hallelujah. I don't know where I'm at in my notes, but I'm just having a great time with God just giving uh, us lessons, um, lessons in his word and what we're supposed to be doing. And I thank God right now that um, he is just continually uh, moving. And I, I bind every distraction right now in the name of Jesus. I, I pray right now, Father God, that you, Father God, will continue, Father God, to minister unto us. Um, also, we're going to go over a few minutes because I do need to get these things out. And um, if you have to click off, just pause the video or go back and look on YouTube and, and go about whatever you need to do. Amen. I didn't go into the definitions of weapons and warfare, so I will just click them and you'll be able to have those notes below uh, below there. But I want I want to be able to make sure that we get this um, one, um, excuse me. Want to get this focus on um, what we're supposed to be doing. Remember the words weapon and warfare, and I added pulling down the strongholds, casting imaginations, and I'm going to be praying for everyone that watches this video that you get that revelation. Holy Spirit, I ask that you to teach us to war the way the Father would have us to war. Many victories will be won as we lay down our ways of handling things, begin to utilize the weapons and the warfare called to be used by your children. We are the children of God and we will line up accordingly to life uh, uh, to the life and ways of our God. And that was just the introduction. What I'm going to give you for homework and there's going to be in the notes too. I don't you saying I just think you're giving us a whole lot of homework. A lot of y'all don't have nothing to do so it's it's all right. It'll be all right. Okay? And um I'm going to skip a couple things because I'm going to go down to some weapons and then we're going to end. All right. May the Lord, the God, the, um, I'm going to say another decree that I wrote down and then I'm going to give you the weapons. I apologize for that. May the Lord that reigns in us be glorified as we continue to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. As we put feet to our conviction and belief in the finished work of Jesus, we are conforming more and more to his image. Day by day, may these qualities be developed, nurtured, protected in your heart, in your mind. I decree increase. As your soul prosper, the rest of your life will prosper. Our weapons that we are to learn, there are eight of them, and I'm going to speak them out, and this is going to be your homework. I want you to study out the weapon of joy, and I'm going to give you a great illustration of that. But these, um, here's the um, eight weapons. The so first weapon is a weapon. One is faith. Weapon two is love. Weapon three is joy. Weapon four, rightly dividing the word of God. Weapon five is obedience. Weapon six is prayer. Weapon seven is unity. And weapon eight is knowing your enemy and the tactics used. But your, weapon, your assignment through this week as you're tearing down high places is joy. Weapon number three. And I did that, I, I picked that weapon this week because when we start getting rid of idols in the high places and imaginations and things that people have done to us and um, spirit of rejection, all these strongholds is gonna come up against you this week, you're gonna need that, that, that joy. 
we know that God loves us. And if you don't know that, you start playing every song that you can think of, find scriptures and start decreeing, declaring. I want you to get notepads. I have so many different notepads and stuff. You know, I, my husband okay um because i need to be able to have the word of god ever before me because i can't always have my bible everywhere with me i i speak i speak them on my phone so when i'm going through stuff and then sometimes people um sometimes i can be tired and people might start trying to get on my nerves i can press one of those buttons i can hear my voice into my spirit saying look this is how you are to live you are to love one another you are to love that person like the love of christ i would those things start coming in my mind so that i know how to react and yes is that serious so when you're retraining your mind when you're retraining your spirit you need to have you need to eat this word you need to devour it there's no nothing more important than you getting this word in you right now People, God, I, I, I decree, I, I'm not, I'm telling you right now, there's going to be a time when they're not going to let us have our Bibles all out and everything else. So you better learn this word. I got, you better learn the word. So well, I did say that weapon three is what we're going to be going on. So joy, joy, um, there's this um, thing that's by Chuck Swindoll. It's called the seven ways to cultivate joy because you're going to need joy while you're tearing down these high places. You are going to need joy when the strongholds come against you. And if anyone doesn't know what strongholds, I will um, try to link that down, a definition for that too. But study the word out. We're not gonna get into the strong men's until I think two Saturdays from now, I believe. Yeah, two Saturdays from now, then that's when we're gonna be going into that. But uh, this is um, seven things of joy, um, seven ways to cultivate joy and is by, um, Chuck Swindoll. Okay. I'm not going to read all his things. I'm going to link it so you can go there and look for it yourself. All right. Chuck Swindoll, my prayer for you today that joy of the Lord will be your strength. Circumstances may not all line up, line up. Let me start over. This is me saying it, but I'm telling you again, this is reference. The seven things are from Chuck Swindoll. When we're I don't, I don't know why I have to say this, but when we are referencing other people's work, we need to make sure we give them the credit. Don't act like something is yours. If you didn't make it up or if you're referring to someone else, don't do that. All right, that's, that's, that's complete and total dishonor. Don't do that. That's deceptive also, but don't do that, okay? Give honor and glory and credit to whomever wrote whatever they wrote, all right? That's a lot. My prayer for you today that the joy of the Lord be your strength. Circumstances may not all line up the way you want. However, we have an eternal destination and a God that loves us so much. Have joy in this and be blessed. The seven ways to cultivate joy. Rehearse with God the reasons you trust him. Number one. Everybody got that? Rehearse with God the reason you trust him. Number two, keep a joy journal. Number three, surround yourself with a joy for, with joyful people. Approach life's challenges and, and trials redemptively. Make praise and gratitude a habit. Fill your mind with music. Take the long view. All right. And you can read all that he wrote with, uh, um, um, about that and the scriptures in the link that I will provide on the YouTube video. Now, just trying to make sure he doesn't want me to say anything else. Now, we're gonna end on that one right there. I think I give you a lot of information and God, God has, um, been speaking and he's continually speaking he's been speaking to some of you in dreams you've been having dreams and you don't understand them so i'm decreeing and clear that you will have revelation on how to um to um interpret your dreams there are some great dream books out there but when i started learning how to 
interpret dreams. I just went to the Holy Spirit and he asked me, he answered me, he gave me the scriptures, he gave me the references. And then after that, then he allowed me to go get dream books. So then I could go and just continually to grow and build that skill. So when, when God starts giving you things, sometimes we so rush to go to other people and we rush to go to books and everything else, but ask the Holy Spirit. He is the best teacher ever. And he will give you whom or who or what book you need, or he will just flat give you the revelation. You'll sit down there and you'll be like, whoa, all these books just came. He is the best teacher in the world. You know? And that's what he's here for. Jesus sent him. When Jesus left, he sent him, the Holy Spirit, to be our teacher, our comforter, and our guide. Develop a relationship, and you will, you will get revelation like never before. Amen? So I'm going to end in prayer, and, and I hope you have a blessed, blessed week. And I know I went over about six, seven minutes. I do apologize. I try to stay under 30 minutes, but sometimes, you know, it, it goes that way. Father God, I thank you for this word. I thank you, Father God, for those that will listen to it, Father God, um, in that they, Father God, will grow and that their hunger and thirst comes from you. And as we begin, Father, to, um, to start teaching on the war and warfare, Father God, is not the way that most people learn spiritual warfare, but Father God, you said to give them a spiritual boot camp. The first day of boot camp, Father God, we do not go in and say, this is this demonic spirit, this is this, this is what we need to do, but we put a foundation. Father God, teach them the foundation of who you are. And then after they learn the foundation of who you are, Father God, teach them who they are. Clothe them, Father God, in your righteousness. Clothe them, Father God, hallelujah, sham Clothe them in the armor of God that we'll be learning about, Father God, and the significance of each piece. Clothe them, Father God, before they're even ready, Father God, to go to battle, that they have already won. Teach them, Father God, that they already walk in victory, that they already stand, Father God, in victory. That, Father God, that there is no weapon that's formed against them that should prosper. But, Father, teach them, Father God, to have everything in every aspect of their lives, Father God, rooted and grounded in you. I thank you, Lord, that you have never taken your hand off of us. And once you have sealed us, we are yours. I thank you no matter what we have done, even if we did it a few minutes ago, Father God, that there's a space to repent, that Father God, you are a loving God, you are a father, but you are a God of correction. And as you are beginning to teach us how to war, Father God, help us to have holy reverential fear for you. I thank you, Lord, that you, Father God, have set high and you look low, and that you know everything that has been done in our lives and, and to us. And then you're saying it is okay for what they meant for harm, I meant for good, and I decree and declare there's a new season. You said that something would break, Father God. And Father, you said as we tear down the high places, Father God, that you will be exalted upon this earth. And you said when Jesus exalted, Father God, when he is lifted up, Father God, in that head that of course your glory will fall and you will heal the land as your people, Father God, as they repent, Father God, and turn from their wicked ways, Lord, you will heal the land. So, Father God, I speak right now that the children of God cry out, Father God, for their sins and cry out, Father God, for their laziness, Father God, and, and their, their lack of laziness about being a servant of the Most High. Now, Father God, we repent and we turn our faces back to you that we cry out that you will heal the land, that you will heal this world, Father God, and that you will heal, Father God, those places in us, Father God, that have been damaged, Father God, those places that we, Father God, have allowed um, hurts and rejection to come in, that we put the bomb of Gilead and you heal us completely, that we walk, Father God, somebody of course, so that we walk, Father God, as children of the most high God, that we straighten our crowns, we got our swords out, and we will go forth and take the territory that you have called us to do. I thank you, Father God, that we will no longer, hallelujah, hide in the cave. Oh, 
Father, we will no longer hide in the caves, Father God, that we, Father God, will go forth, Father God, as the promise of old, Father God. We will not look to the right or to the left, but we will decree your word. I speak, Father God, the fire of God to consume everything that's not like you, Lord. He did a good shit. <coughs> everything that's not like you, Lord, that we, Father God, can go into this lost, dying, sick world and proclaim your glory, your love, your power, your salvation, your way to salvation with purity that people will father god will do and say what doing what must we do to be saved because they see us father god standing in all that you have given us father god you have called us to seek your face and lord i say your face we will see and I cannot even say we. I have to say it for myself. Father, your face will I seek. Your words will I speak. Father God, there is no turning back. You have released, Father God, the fire of the Lord upon your prophet. And I will not be still. And I will not be quiet. So thus say the Lord, people of God, this is a shaking. This is a calling. This is our awakening. Be about your father's business. Stop playing with idols. This is your time to tear down high places and go before your father and get cleansed. Go to the threshing floor. Do not get up until he has waned every evil thought, every, uh, every judgmental spirit out of you, every high-minded place that you will walk up, that you will raise up as the sons of righteousness with all power and authority in your hand. And that he has some. leave all the mess at the altar and let him purify you. Remember, it is only one God and he must be obeyed. I decree and declare this time, this teaching, these words, these proclamations, and the most mighty and powerful name there is Jesus. Amen.